Hello again. I'm here in Astoria, Oregon. I've been painting at Cape Disappointment and I came over to the Oregon side. I have to admit, mainly to hit a Starbucks. Um, and I found this cool old building sitting behind the, the Starbucks. So there's a wide spot here to stand. I thought I'd set up and do a quick oil painting. I'm playing some more with this Claussen's oil primed linen. It's glued to a 11 by 14 birch panel. This is just for practice. This is an interesting old structure and I like the way the shadows are traveling across it. I think by the time I'm done, this side kind of turned away closest to us is getting further into shade. So I think that'll make a, a neat composition. So I'll get set up and get started. Try to go pretty quick on this one. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. All right, as usual, I'll start with a turpentine wash. I'm going to suggest that these mountains extend behind the building, just because I think they're so interesting and they'll break up that flat horizon a little bit. May or may not work. Maybe more impactful just leaving the building alone or putting in that long Astoria to Washington, Oregon to Washington bridge and you know as I'm thinking about it and as I'm looking about it I'm changing my mind. I'm just going to go sky right to the water and I may add the bridge later in the studio to give kind of a, a far distant break to the horizon. We'll see. I'm going to just wash in a little bit of cobalt blue for the sky. Really high key and then I'll wash in some cad yellow for the building itself. Cad yellow on the sunny side, alizarin crimson on the shadow side, and then cad yellow light for the water. Try to catch the underlying greenish yellow glow of the water. As it comes closer to me, I may introduce just a little bit of burnt sienna. Then I'll go back in with a small brush, a little filbert, it's an ivory filbert from Rosemary & Co. I'll come back in with that and adjust the drawing a little bit since this is kind of a complicated structure, kind of a drawing project. All right, there's the turpentine wash in, and I also wiped away the lightest lights with a small brush with a little bit of turpentine. So now I'll just start mixing up some colors. I'll mix up the, the sky color and, and then I'll start with the sky colors and then move into the building and then finally the water. I like to do the water last because I can use the colors I mixed previously and just add those to the, the watercolor to imply the reflection. So for the sky, I'm gonna go with a little bit of cerulean blue and white. I may add a little bit of ultramarine blue toward the top of the sky. Toward the bottom, I'll add just a little bit of yellow ochre to add a tiny bit of warmth. Gamsol, mineral spirits, Put away the turpentine. I've got some colors mixed up now for the sky, a richer blue for the top of the sky, and a faded out cerulean blue as it moves down the sky, and then some warm whites mixed up for right above the water. As I paint this, I'm going to try to correct the, the water line just a little bit. I want it to be perfectly flat, and right now it's not. Now, a trick you can use is a little piece of tape. Throw some tape across there, 
and paint over the edge and it'll give you a beautifully flat line. But I haven't tried that plain air. I'll try that real quick on this one. I've got a piece of duct tape across there now. I put the duct tape on my jeans first just to take away a little bit of the tackiness. And you're going to want to remove it quickly or else it'll gum up the works, especially if there's any oil paint or wet turpentine solvent down, it'll pick up that adhesive from the tape. So you really don't want to use this if the turpentine wash or the paint is wet at all. Get down what you need to to straighten up the line and then remove the tape as quickly as you can. Uh, meaning, don't leave it on there on the panel any longer than you have to. But as you remove it, remove it gently um, and pull it so that the paint isn't flicked down onto the unpainted area. Now I have a nice flat line in there for the horizon, which is helpful, but I haven't quite saved myself all of the fiddly painting of a straight line. I need to now go back and paint in the water right up to the edge of that. But now I have a nice flat horizon line across the panel so the right side matches the left side even though they don't meet behind the building. The illusion is there that it's a beautifully flat horizon line. Now I'll mix up the colors of the building. And then the building, I'm going to try to stick with just burnt umber, burnt sienna, cad red, cad yellow, maybe a touch of alizarin crimson, and then cerulean blue, and cobalt blue in the shadows. It's so bright out here that I'm painting with my sunglasses on so everything is skewed a little bit warm, which is okay. It's such a blue scene because of the, the blue sky and the blue water. It's okay if it's a little warm, I think. colors mixed up now for the building. I've got the blackest, the dark dark I can mix here, which is just a blend of burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and alizarin crimson. I could use straight ivory black, but I'm actually seeing a lot of color in the black, so I don't want to use that straight. And I've got a bluish black, it has quite a bit of cobalt blue added, and a reddish black which has more lizard and crimson. And then I have a, a few next darker. So these are the shadow side and the shadows on the building. This is kind of a deep lavender, a little gray, maybe a little too red. Um, we'll see how it looks when I get it on there. This is a shadow on the front of the building which has a lot of reflected light. It seems like from from somewhere making it very warm. Maybe that's just an optical illusion for my sunglasses because you'd think that the light reflected up from the water would give it a cooler or greener cast. Um, but what I'm seeing here on site is a really warm shadow. Got a little bit of green for the moss on the piles, the side beams and the piles in the water under the building. I've got some gray, greens, grayish blues mixed up for that little building on the side, which is a different color than these. And then I can use this also to streak some of the weather beaten wood, add some texture as I go. Then I've got the sunny side of the building mixed up here. And I've tried to keep everything in the sun, the direct sun, a higher value than everything that's in the shadow, and that's pretty easy on, on this one. Sometimes more challenging, especially on a cloudy day. So I'll map those in. I'll use a ivory flat from Rosemary & Co. Extra long, extra long flat.
see how much the light has changed already in just about an hour. As the sun moves overhead, it's really brightening up that water. I think some of the boats passing through have stirred up some silt as well. The water looks a little muddier than it did earlier. Well, my camera died there. I think the battery got too low. It's still showing a bar or two, but when I turned around, it had died. So you unfortunately missed me mapping in the front of the building. But there it is. Just tried to go quickly, roughly. I'm not trying to capture too much detail here on site. Now I'm going to mix up the color for the water and map that in real quick. I'm going to try to refer back to the water color I saw earlier which was a little richer green than what I'm seeing now. Okay, this should be fun. I've got the colors mixed up for the water now. But kind of a rich, darker green for the far horizon. There's also a middle band of that right below the building. And then some lighter shades for the silty bottom of the river. This is the Columbia River out here for the silty bottom. Um, of the river showing through the water and then some lighter green just to shift things to show some of the currents and the elevation of the river bottom that I'm kind of seeing here and then also some really grayed out blue green to act as reflection of the sky. I also have some of the original sky color that I can throw on right at the very end to add a, a true note of color to uh, really suggest the sky is reflecting. And then I've got my building colors as well still that I can use to map in some of the reflected light from the building in the water at the end. Use a big brush and go fast because the light is changing so much. fun part, the, the water. Oh, that's my favorite building. What is it, do you know? Um, it used to be a, like a cannery. Okay. Yeah, I really love it. It's... I do too. You know, the walkway is an antenna. It was an antenna, okay. and, and they laid it down. Oh, wow. So that they, you know, have a new walkway, and they oh. were going to, I don't know, make a restaurant or something. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is about it, but that's my favorite building yeah. in the whole river walk. Yeah, it's a beautiful old thing. It really it, is. I wasn't going to paint because it's too sunny, but uh, I had to do it. I had to jump in and... This incredible old building is along the Astoria River Walk. It's along the Columbia River. I found out later that it was built in 1897 for the fishing industry for net storage. Later it was owned by an artist, Royal Nebaker, I think that's how you pronounce his name, a famous artist on the West Coast. He called it the Upper Town Net Loft. It was his studio. It was destroyed by a storm in 2007. He lost everything, his art, his books.
Well, here's where it ended up. Yeah, pretty good drawing exercise. I think the shape of the building is right. It looks the way it should in the land, in the landscape. I liked painting on this linen surface. Met some nice people here along the trail. There's a little walkway that goes through Astoria and along the Columbia River. I do like the shadow pattern under the building. It's random enough that it doesn't look uh, you know, boring. There's some interesting things going on there. I need to maybe reinforce it over here. I scraped it down because the green was jumping out too much. It was too bright under there, so I scraped it off and restated the, the piles, which helped. I like the suggested reflection in the water. I think that's working. What's not working is the top of the building. I need to clean that up a little bit. Also, such a boring background. You know, I think now that it's painted, I do want to add either the bridge, maybe I'll exaggerate the shape of the bridge or the size, or add some of those mountains. I'll put it in Procreate and just play with some different things. A little bit of a rough spot, even though it's cooler here. It probably only hit about 65 degrees with the sun beating on me, on my back the whole time. It, I did get pretty warm. But that's part of plain air painting. Well, I'll touch it up in the studio and throw it out on my website. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate that. It really supports the channel, helps others to find it. If you want to support the channel, please jump over to my website sign up for my newsletter, take a look at the plein air paintings, I sell them pretty reasonably, and I'll see you in the next one. I'll put a studio critique on my Patreon channel, you can find the link in the description below.